Yo, this is Elliot Hulse. Welcome to Muscle Science and Application Podcast. Thank God it's Friday. Get ready for a special TGIF edition of Muscle Science and Application. Thanks for tuning in to part two of our interview with elite powerlifter and inventor Mark Bell. Mark Bell has invented shoes for Reebok, the Slingshot, a variety of other products. Uh, if you missed part one, that interview is in episode 77. Today's interview, we pick up right where we left off, talking about the opening of Mark's gym, his philosophies on training, and his other successful products. Enjoy the show. Maybe uh, if I if I recall correctly, the kind of the story of you opening uh, Super Training as a gym, if, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that kind of that kind of story where you're like the, the money and the things weren't quite there to make it make sense, but you did it anyways? Maybe you can tell us a little about that. There's always a way, you know, there's always, there's, you know, as people say, there's a will, there's a way type thing. It might sound corny sometimes, but there, there really is, um, uh, you know, my, my background is I come from upper middle class. So it's easier for me to talk about this uh, in a certain way than other people that, that don't have uh, support in their life, you know, financially and otherwise. Uh, so I'm very lucky. I have awesome parents and, uh, not that my parents paid for my gym, but I do have great parents that allowed me to, to, to get to certain points in my life. And without that, it would have been more difficult. So it's easier for me to speak about it sometimes. Um, if, if I sound kind of nonchalant about it, that might be why. Um, but I just, uh, when I started my gym, it was something I just started up. I found a place that I thought would be affordable. Uh, the place was 900 bucks a month, and I just thought, okay, if I get 10 guys to train with me and it's 125 bucks a month, that'll cover the rent and it'll be a little extra. So all I need 10, 10 guys, you know? And so that's kind of what we started out with. Before that time, um, I started super training up inside somebody else's gym. I didn't pay for any rent inside that gym. There were some unfortunate things that happened at the gym. And uh, at that point, um, I had them buy a lot of equipment, a lot of awesome equipment, reverse hyper, glute ham raise, monolift, competition bench, and they were all on board with buying all that stuff because they wanted me to train some athletes in there and so on. And so anyway, fast forward a couple months, the gym is going under, you know, or a year or so, the gym's going under, things aren't going well there, and they stopped paying me uh, to train people. I stopped getting a check there. I also just kind of like worked there, basically just worked the desk. And... Um, they stopped paying me, and so I just went in and said, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I'm the only one who didn't get a check. Well, if you're releasing me or what's the deal is, and they just said, you're kind of the only one here making any money, and we can't afford to pay you anymore. And I said, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's been nice. Someone made me aware of that. I said, all I want to do is I want to be able to uh, train people here for the next few months, and I'd like to be able to get that equipment, you know, maybe even purchase it from you. And so... They were pretty cool. They, were, they allowed me to purchase it. Not only did I purchase it, but I purchased it for about half price. And so that really set me up well to start super training. And then you fast forward a little bit. I um, Once I found that first place that was about 900 bucks a month, I was able to make that work because I already had some people training at that first gym. Um, so the main thing is you need to you need to build some sort of interest of some sort uh, in terms of in terms of a gym. You know, and in terms of like Power Magazine, you know, Power Magazine had nearly a thousand subscribers right off the bat because I already had a following. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it, it's it's a good idea to to have something in place uh, before you start something. Obviously, the slingshot and stuff like that, it was easier to start after I was already popular. Uh, people were already sort of more interested in it. You know, after I already benched you know eight fifty four in a contest. And so, of course, there's going to be a little buzz about it. Um, and, uh, you know, like, as I mentioned earlier, where there's a will, there's a way. You can always find, there's always ways around things. There's always ways of figuring things out. Um, one of our original members um, was a, was a, our, our only member that ever bench pressed 900 pounds in 903 bench. And uh, he he was very gracious in uh he had he had a uh, heating and air conditioning business, and uh, I went to him and said, um, "Yeah, or he he had we had a conversation one day at lunch, and he was just saying, hey, man, you know, I got some extra dough, 
if you need some money for the gym. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I thought about what he said a little bit longer and just, I went back to him at one point and, uh, we made the, we made an agreement. He gave me five grand and there was no strength attached. And so Uh, not everyone's always going to be able to find someone to give them that amount of money, especially with no strings attached. But you don't really know until you ask. You start to ask around a little bit. Um, if you're going to, if you're looking at starting your own gym or starting your own business, um, be a good idea if you start talking and communicating with different people um, about your idea. And I wouldn't suggest taking on a partner or anything like that, or 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 getting a loan of, or anything along those lines. But um, if you can find someone that's a, a friend of yours, someone that believes in what you're doing, someone that believes in you, um, you know, maybe, maybe you would be able to have a similar experience that I had. Sure. So with that uh, kind of seed capital fuel to get you started, um, was that something that you ultimately paid back? You guys kind of said like, hey, man, when I can, it'll come back to you or, or not? No, no, that was, uh, you know, the, the, the full agreement there was just that that was just a wash. You know, he... he uh, because uh, uh, we had that conversation, but that's also important to to to, to know is that uh, you should you should have that conversation. You know, anytime there's any sort of money exchange, it should be very clear on on uh, what on what the deal is. And so, um, and uh, you know, in starting up the slingshot, I ended up with a similar situation. Uh, had a good friend of mine who uh, was able to give me a little bit of startup cash. With him, I was able to pay him back years later because. Um, we had that understanding up front that I would pay him back. So it just depends on the situation, depends on what you both agree upon. But uh, the first guy who helped with super training, basically our agreement was that he was just going to be a diehard super training member and he was, uh, was going to train at super training and I was going to help him get to a 900-pound bench. Nice. That's not a bad agreement. I think uh, priceless being able to get a 900-pound yeah, bench. I think we both won, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, – it sounds like here that you've you, you're really encouraging this idea of you know getting other people in your tribe, talking to other people, building a support system around you. And I think there's a lot of people that are often concerned about like, oh my gosh, someone's going to rip off my idea or things like that. And I, I've, if I'm not mistaken, I think there have been people that have tried to rip off the slingshot or something. And so, yeah. what are your thoughts on patents or when it's okay to share your idea or who you share it with and stuff like that? That topic could be a little bit more complicated. Um, I, I would still always suggest that uh, whatever the idea or concept is that anybody has, they should just just make the product. Um, there's always going to be someone coming out saying, oh, "I made that," you know. Somebody's always going to say, "Someone's always going to say something stupid like that that they invented it first or that they made it." Um, you know, you hear it all the time, even with even with great inventions. Um, you, you hear people kind of saying those types of things, but. Um, regardless of like patents or trademarks or anything, I would just try to make uh, whatever you know. Somebody has an idea for something that would help you on a squat or something like that. I would just just make it. Just whatever the idea is, just make it. And then you can start as you make it. You can start to kind of look into look into things a little bit more. Obviously, you wouldn't want to get sued. And you wouldn't want to rip anybody else off. Um, but if you feel it's a it's a you feel like it's a unique idea. And uh, you think it's creative, then you should just um, you should just go after it. Because like I with the slingshot, you know I didn't uh, I didn't take any precaution. I just made it. I just you know just did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, like a lot of things. It's like ideas. Well, I don't mean to say there are a dime a dozen, but you know there's there's probably someone else out there in this large world with with someone's idea, but the difference maker uh, yeah. is the person that's actually going to do it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean anything that's been done is probably pretty much been done already you know yeah to some extent and so uh yeah you're, you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to figure out ways of uh beating beating people to the punch or out marketing them or whatever the case is you know yeah if we all if we all got paid for what was done in our head we'd all be millionaires right it's the people that actually <laughs> do it yeah i have a lot of people that 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 say you know oh, i had an idea you know and they just never they never go through with it or 
and I've had a lot of people, you know, tell me like, oh, you know, I've used bands behind my arms and I had that idea for the slingshot. And I'm like, that's not a slingshot, man. That's yeah. nothing like a slingshot. You hook bands around your back of your arms and got your triceps all bruised up. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with a slingshot. Sure. But even more so is to me is it's like it's, it, in that case, it's taking something that's already out there and just kind of like repurposing it rather than actually going through the effort of making a completely unique, you know, right. something that fully serves the purpose and isn't just like a jerry rig makeshift kind of deal. Right. Yeah. No, so that's, that's cool. You did that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the Reebok shoe. So, you know, you're doing, you're doing your own thing. You got your own brand the slingshot and stuff. And then ultimately now a uh, pretty big launch for a really big name. Is that, like, where did that all start? Did you guys propose to them? Did they come after you? Yeah, that, that basically uh, was born through uh, doing seminars for CrossFit, um, doing uh, some uh, CrossFit powerlifting <clears throat> seminars and creating a relationship uh, with members of CrossFit. Um, and But ultimately, even more so than that, it was uh, basically, you know, a lot of things end up being about your relationships and who you, and who you connect with. Um, and... Uh, who you support and who then in return gives you support back. Uh, like with uh, Kelly Sturette, for example. Uh, Kelly Sturette was the one who set up uh, Jesse Burdick and I's meeting with Chad Whitman of Reebok uh, to get the Reebok power thing she made. And so, you know, I guess the main point of pretty much all of this is you're not going to, like, the slingshot was my idea and my invention, but you're not going to be able to do much of anything in your life completely and totally by yourself. You're going to need some help, you know, without the help and support of my parents and without the help and support of my wife, I wouldn't be able to do like really any, like none of this would have ever happened, you know, Mm -hmm. um, without my brothers, my brothers taught me how to lift, you know? And so you're not, you're, you're going to, you're going to want to, you know, always try to pursue stuff by yourself, but ultimately, you're gonna you're gonna need a little bit of assistance along the way, and you're gonna have to create a good network of friends, a good network of people, and uh, something that I think was was said to me a few years back by Ed Cohn, who's the greatest powerlifter of all time. I was frustrated with somebody, and he just basically said, you know, be good to those who are good to you, and nothing else. And it's like those are like impossible words to live by because. You know, you get you, for every for every fifty people that love what you do, there's always that one hater that's in there. And uh, for some reason, it's just human nature, I guess. They focus in on on the one you know, the one person that that uh, you know throws a little stab at you. You know, but you're gonna want to try to surround yourself with good people, and that's the way you're gonna be able to uh, advance, and that's the way you're gonna be able to continue to make progress and. Me meeting with uh, Reebok, who's a, a giant, you know, in the apparel business. Um, it wouldn't have ever happened if I wasn't, if I didn't have a good relationship with Jesse Burdick, if I didn't have a good relationship with uh, uh, Kelly Starrett. You know, th- those types of things aren't going to happen. It's not, it's not going to happen uh, without a lot of hard work either. We put a lot of time and a lot of effort into those uh, seminars that we did for CrossFit as well. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately, Spending time around CrossFitters made you realize, like, hey, I see a place for a new shoe here, or, or how did that? Well, there's just there's never been a powerlifting shoe before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, there's been different types of, uh, you know, there's been people using uh, basically uh, Olympic lifting shoes for powerlifting, and those can be great for squats and stuff like that. Uh, there's been people using Chuck Taylors um, for years. And having quite a bit of success with that as well, but there really wasn't anything, you know. A, a Chuck Taylor was a shoe designed in like the 40s or 50s uh, for basketball, and it just never changed. The, there was never any sort of technolo- technological change to it, and so we just thought, you know, we could. We always thought they were thin. They were very like, you know, uh, the, the rubber underneath your foot uh, wasn't very wide, and we noticed a lot of power lifters and plus. When you're doing a heavy squat, wide stance squat, or heavy sumo deadlift, uh, that your foot is is going to expand outward quite a bit, especially with a lot of weight on your back. And so we thought um, there would be a great need for basically just creating a shoe with a little bit more room in it, a shoe that has really good grip to it. And uh, you know, and going to Reebok, they loved the idea, they loved the concept right away, and it wasn't really 
luckily for us, it wasn't anything we had to really sell them on. They were just they were just on board with it, so that worked out really well. I yeah, know that's cool too, and particularly when you figure that uh, Nike and Adidas both have a Olympic weightlifting shoe. I think it kind of gives them a unique market penetration that obviously different. So yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, what you'd say on that too is like the because of the um, the deal between Reebok and CrossFit. You know, Reebok is consistently looking and searching for the next thing to sell to the CrossFit community. Mm-hmm. Not that they're just pulling stuff out of their ass, but they're looking for stuff that they feel uh, serves a need and serves a purpose within uh, the CrossFit community. And so that's that's a big reason why the shoe got made, and that's a big reason why it says CrossFit on it. A lot of powerlifters got kind of sad that it said CrossFit on it, but you know, there's a $110 million deal on the table between the two of those, so... Uh, Jesse Burdick and myself, even though we voted to not have the cross, have CrossFit on there, that's just the way it goes. We couldn't we couldn't do everything with the shoe. So how how was that for you? I mean, it sounds like you've been largely for most of your life a very creative person. You do things your own way. You don't necessarily take advice from all the traditional paths. And so was that hard? Like, what made you want to turn that shoe over to them versus saying maybe just launching it as your own shoe? Oh yeah, I just think that that would just be too hard. To be honest with you, you know, you don't you don't want to ever like you know, uh, you know, as a lifter and as someone who's competitive, you you don't really want to admit that certain things are too hard. But um, making my own shoe is not something I, that I would I would uh, mess with. Uh, there's a uh, a lot of companies that are huge um, that uh, also wouldn't wouldn't mess with it either. It's not. I, I just um, you know I, I thought it'd be easier you know to to go through somebody else. And the idea was the idea was kind of birthed together as well. It wasn't just uh, it wasn't like I had this dream and this passion to create this shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, it was more like they came to us and, and consulted us on a shoe. So. Mm-hmm. No, that's cool. And then obviously, reason for that is kind of positioning yourself as as an expert on that area, and then also having kind of a track record of having launched your own creative products before. You know, they knew that you had it had it in you, if you will. Um, how important has social media, uh, practicing what you preach, giving info for free, stuff like that, been in kind of growing yourself as an authority figure and whatnot? Do you think that that's always a prerequisite? Are there too many people out there that just want money right away? Or I hear people, you know, the, um, some people, you know, asking about sponsorship and some people asking about, you know, financial gain off of things. I think, um, you know, those things they need to be they need to, need to be earned. And you know, if so, if it's uh, if someone's been in power to think for three or four years, and they're not really making a whole lot, or you know, they're having trouble, uh, you know, turning their uh, passion into a business, it's because they've only been in it for three or four years. Um, you need to be involved in it for a long time. You need to put a lot of time and effort into it, and you need to absorb a lot. Again, you know, I've said it many, many times before. You need to be around a lot of great people. You need to surround yourself. If you don't understand how to do that, then that's a major problem. But going to seminars would be a good idea. Going to power team meets would be a good idea. Going to strongman events would be a good idea. Going to CrossFit events would be a good idea. Going to these different events and, and going around these, these different things would be a, a good place to start. But uh, social media is uh, is huge. You know, it's, it's a bit it's a big deal uh, to be able to put your product out there and to uh, you know and you know, I always kind of, I'm always like, eh, am I doing too much with it or whatever? But it's like, that's kind of my, like, the slingshot is mine. And so I guess people understand that enough. And so uh, for every, you know, three or four people that hate it, three or four people are probably purchasing it. So yeah. I guess I'll probably just continue continue down that, uh, down that route. But for me, I've never been a person who, you know, with money or otherwise or without money, I've never been a person who's really, cared about money mm-hmm. um you know your your money can gauge your success to a certain extent um in terms of business and once you get something like rolling um but uh, i've never been a you know a person who really gives gives too much cares too much about it and that's a that's a big reason why i've been i've given stuff out for free so much i send out a lot of products for free to athletes um I do a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of work for free. A lot of, uh, a lot of training for free. My gym is free. Um, Supertraining.tv is free. My Powercast is free. 
I give out tons of information for free. And uh, it's not like, it's not like I hang that over people's heads either, you know. But um, this is something I love to do, something I'm passionate about. And information was passed along to me for free many, many times. When I went to Westside Barbell and trained under the tutelage of Louis Simmons, I paid zero dollars to go there. Zero bucks is how much I paid to go there. And oftentimes he would pay for breakfast or lunch and that kind of stuff as well. So, um, you know, I learned learned some great lessons from that. Things have a way of, of uh, coming full circle, especially in this industry. Um, the people that you're meeting now through your podcast and through going to the Arnold Classic, you're going to keep, it's going to be weird, dude. You're going to keep resurfacing around and you keep running into similar people and who knows what business uh, venture you'll end up in. But I'm telling you now that you probably end up doing something with some of these different people that you've met. You know, it's just going to end up that way. It's the way it works. And so, uh, you know, you do have to try to <laughs> try to keep a level head, which isn't always easy. Because like I said earlier, there's people kind of always gunning for you, you know, but you have to just ignore that. There's, there's so much more positive. If you, if you look at the bright side, there's so much more positive things out there than there are negative. Um, you get these couple of people that hate on CrossFit or you get a couple of people that hate on, you know, people squatting high in powerlifting or whatever the case is. Uh, but for every, you know, one or two of those, there's thousands of other people that really love the sport. Um, and you always hear about like the infighting and powerlifting stuff and, those are all things if people just stop being so overly concerned with them, they would just stop being a problem. Mm -hmm. No, I like, I like all that insight cause it's very, uh, tried and true or right from your own experience. And so that really helps it to, uh, resonate. And so obviously you just mentioned there, you know, that your motivation has not been money. Um, and so, so what is it? Is it creativity, helping others, expressing yourself, wanting to create a legacy? What's, what's your main motive for all the product launches and yeah. all the different things you're involved in? Yeah, just to just to reach as many people as I can, I guess you know, um, just to uh, you know get my products. You know, like I, I'm starting to see, you know, so many people now wearing the uh, elbow sleeves in in training videos and stuff, and that's something I could be really proud of. And obviously, there is uh, financial gain associated with that because they purchased my product. But I really love even more so than anything like that. I love hearing. Um, you know, someone would come up to me and be like, man, like I haven't been able to bench press in five years. I had, you know, double rotator cuff surgery and this and that. And, and now they're able to bench press again with a slingshot. I've had many people come up to me and tell me they started powerlifting because of me, because of a video that I put up or because of, uh, because they read power magazine. And those are the things that empower me, that motivate me, that, uh, that excite me the most. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, money is always is always going to be something that is going to uh, make the world go around, make everything uh, kind of happen. But um, really, the main motivation is just to inspire people and change people's lives. That's awesome. No, I, I like that. And then the money will ultimately follow if you're doing a, a good thing yeah, and touching of course, other people. Yeah. Yep, that's awesome. So with with the Power Mag, how did you? Uh, how did you ultimately tackle the idea of like now you get a CrossFit feature in there and uh, deciding to go digital and some of those things? Uh, just, yeah, just talk on to, changing uh, with the times. Power Magazine, Power Magazine tried to uh, um, encompass as much stuff as possible. Um, for anybody listening to this, I'm always looking for uh, more writers. Um, we have Matt Vincent who does Highland Games. Um, we've had... Uh, John Anderson, who does Strongman, that Derek Poundstone also does Strongman. We obviously have tons of powerlifters, but I'm always looking for unique and new things to write about um, or to have people write about for me. And just anything that has to do do with uh, strength or improvement or even fitness. I mean, we don't we try not to travel too far outside the the strength the strength element, um, but. It, you know, it could be anything from bodybuilding to uh, shot putting to gymnastics. I mean, any of that stuff, anything where where people are trying to uh, make progress or just pe people are trying to um, get stronger, I guess you'd say, um, and trying to teach people that there's just so many different things, so many different people to learn from. Um, and there's just, there's so many different ways of getting stronger. 
Um, but it's it, what I like. What what ends up happening is you have many different people saying many different things, but they're saying a lot of the same things in different ways. Um, and pretty much time and time again, we hear the best, the cream of the crop, saying. You know, it's about hard work, it's about consistency, it's not so much about the program, it's about surrounding yourself with good people, it's about being motivated, and, th- and those kinds of things. Um, and that just uh, allows me to teach people, have them learn much faster than I was able to learn, and have them uh, get themselves in a good environment right away, get themselves in a good position as quickly as possible so they can make as much progress and enjoy themselves as much as possible if you aren't able to make progress, you're not going to have a whole lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I got two last questions. One I'm sure you get asked sometimes is, have you ever thought of going into supplements? Why or why not? I would never really say never. Um, I do have an idea, um, but uh, it just seems, uh, you know, it seems, um, it seems like there's too many fish in the sea to do that. Um and also I'm not somebody who wants to just have like another product that's similar to everybody else's. You know, um, I'm not sure what your experience was at the Arnold, but to me, walking around, so many of those booths seem the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, my booth, you know, I'm obviously impartial to it. But my booth seemed to have a different buzz, different vibe to it than all the other booths that were going on there. Um, it's because we have a unique product. We have something different. We have something that actually works, <laughs> and uh, we have something that's been proven over the last several years, and it's a, and that's a big reason why it keeps growing. It's a big reason why people keep coming back. I, I'm seeing similar people now, and they're like, I have the red one, and I bought the blue one, now I want the yellow one. You know, people are all fired up, and uh, they're they're all excited, and um, so I don't I don't think I would get into uh, the supplement industry. Um, not that I don't believe in supplements. I think they have their place. Um, I think they can be important. I think in terms of supplementation, one of the best things it can do for you is simply just put you on a regimen, put you on a routine. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, if you have protein powder and you get vitamins and so on and so forth, you're probably less likely to be out partying Friday night because you're, you're trying to make everything go towards certain uh, particular goals. Mm Mm-hmm. For any of our listeners that are not uh, aware, Mark is a sponsored athlete with BSN, and maybe tell us a little bit about that decision. Ultimately, you know, people. Um, it's actually funny. We just had Rich Piana on yesterday right. chatting about uh, him leaving Newton, and then just he he couldn't get over how many people were not aware that like so many athletes are like just you know paid off to to say good things about products and stuff. And so maybe from from talking with you, it sounds to me clearly like. Uh, you're someone that, you know, probably is only going to take something you believe in and whatnot. So explain how that kind of came about. Yeah. With, with, well, with BSN, they, they, uh, they reached out actually to my wife because they were, the guy was a fan of uh, power magazine and he just said, Hey, you know, I need to renew my subscription. And I, I tried to do it or something. He wasn't sure uh, how he was supposed to renew his subscription. And so my wife noticed, uh, you know, in his tag, in his, his name, and uh, they said he was, uh, you know, uh, the executive for BSN, basically. And so she was like, well, shit, you know, this is a potential advertiser. You know, let's, let's just comp him a, a, a magazine, which we often do, you know, for Muscle Farm and various companies of that nature, Animal, stuff, people, people, of, uh, people in the industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the guy wrote back, and he's like, oh, I'm a huge fan of Mark's you know, Power Project and this and that. And he thought that I had a, uh, a sponsorship with Muscle Farm. And uh, I did. I was sponsored by Muscle Farm for a while, but it was always just a handshake. We never had anything concrete um, and uh, never had anything, never had any, like, real plans with them. And that was kind of the frustrating part was it was a great company to be with. And I'm still good friends with uh, Corey Gregory, the vice president of Muscle Farm, um, one of the founders of Muscle Farm. But the main thing was, is like there wasn't a lot of communication in terms of like, is there any plans with me or am I just like another sucker who's got, who's getting some free supplements, which that was cool and I'm grateful for. But to me, whether I'm with Reebok or with BSN or with Rogue Fitness or with anybody else, I want to 
I want to put in some work for these companies. I want to try to make the companies better. I want to try to give them feedback. If I try a product, I want to be able to tell them that it sucks. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be able to tell or tell them that it's great. You know, I want to be able to work with these companies and to be able to have those conversations. And that was something that I noticed right away in talking with Eric Hart from BSN. Uh, we had some conversations early on, and he was just, I said, you know, it'd be cool if you guys had this type of thing and that type of thing. And he said, well, we got, you know, some things, you know, in the works. And um, he kind of explained, you know, some of the direction, some of the things that they're doing. And um, he basically agreed to, um, you know, consider some of these things and to and to get me in front of people that can, uh, you know, help create products and so on. So it's great to be able to, and guys like Flex Lewis, Flex Lewis is sponsored by BSN as well. He's a pro bodybuilder, won the Mr. Olympia, I think two or three years in a row as the lightweight uh, division. Um, but they're listening to guys like that, and that's important that they're listening to people that are on the front lines, people that are competing, and uh, that's basically the position I wanted to be in. So that's why I decided to, to go with them. On top of that, um, they're also promoting me, which is great. And that, that was something that I just, I didn't get any love from Muscle Farm in that, in that, uh, in that way. So they're running ads with me in it. Um, at the uh, Arnold, they had a, a video playing with me in it and stuff like that. So to me, I'm always trying to you know, work with bodybuilding.com as well. I might be working with Muscle and Fitness coming up pretty soon as well, but uh, I'm always just trying to speak from a lo- larger and larger platforms is really all I'm ever trying to do. I think some people mistaken that sometimes for me being like money hungry or whatever, but uh, trust me on a lot of the things that I do, uh, they're either for very little amounts of money or they're not really for any money at all. So um, I'm always just trying to elevate uh, the different places that I'm able to speak from and trying to get new audiences to my YouTube and to my Twitter and to my Instagram and all those different things because it just allows me to speak to people in large volumes rather than like train people individually, which is something I've always hated to do. Sure. Do you recommend that people, you mentioned like with Muscle Farm, it's just kind of a handshake. Do you recommend that people kind of stay independent, you know, Mark Mark Bell as a brand, or do you recommend that people do kind of ink, ink some things with different people? No, I think uh, I think the less paperwork that you have, the better off you are. Um, a lot of these companies that that give stuff out for free, they don't mind giving it out for free as long as you're using their product and talking about their product. They don't mind if you're taking some of the companies. Um, they don't mind if you're taking similar product from another company. So, um, with that being said, like uh, for example, Muscle Farm. When I was with Muscle Farm. There was a, a hydrolyzed whey protein that I was a really big fan of uh, that, I, that I still took because they didn't offer it, you know. And so I, I even I even talked to the people at Muscle Farm, and they were like, yeah, it's, you know, we don't sell that. So, But, yeah, if you don't have uh, paperwork attached to you, then you, you'll just be left tied down. You know, some of these companies are going to be like, well, you can't wear that shirt. You can't wear this. You can't wear that. Like, this is a Reebok shirt. I stuck my own Slingshot logo on it. But, um you know, my contract with Reebok doesn't tie me to only wearing Reebok stuff. If I wanted to wear another brand, I could, you know. So I would also, you know, if you're ever going to sign a contract, have some people look at it uh, that are smarter than you, <laughs> hopefully a lawyer, um, but uh, have people look at the contract and just and just make sure that it's not too one-sided. They will always be one-sided because that's what a sponsorship entails, is some one-sidedness, <laughs> but uh, if you're a large company to an individual, it's, it's always going to be one-sided. Uh, but yeah, you can just try to ensure that it's not too one-sided. Yeah, no, I like that. And I actually really like what you said about um, BSN allowing you to kind of be involved in the hands-on R&D, if you will. I think a lot of times I've always thought of it, you know, like, oh, people should go with a supplement sponsor that maybe is someone they've used their products for years already. And, you know, that's certainly one route, but I also like that route of maybe you haven't uh, and I'm not saying that was the case with you, but you know maybe you haven't been super involved in taking their products for years, but you can see their you know res- reciprocity and they, they want you involved and and you know are willing to take ideas and feedback and and make you part of the the team and stuff. And so I think that's really important too. Um, and I hadn't hadn't necessarily thought of that. Let's close here with uh, the the famous question, like some random thing that people don't know about you. Uh, random factor it could be anything at all that maybe you think. People would be would be shocked if they knew. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, uh, it's not too many. I don't think there's too many weird things going on. Um, I, I post so much on Instagram and stuff. I don't, I don't think I don't think anything's safe. You know, I think people know a lot. Um, my wife makes fun of me because I watch like Desperate Housewives and stuff, but or not Desperate Housewives, Real Housewives. Nice. I watch a lot of junky like reality TV, but I've actually calmed down on that a little bit. I'm getting, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get over a little bit. Yeah, uh, I would say that's probably about it. Cool. Well, awesome, Mark. Uh, I think you shared a lot of great insights with our listeners here, and we're excited to uh, air this episode and share it with the world. And uh, if you want to do any cool. final plugs for yourself, your products, or anyone that you believe in, have at it. Uh, if you want to, you know, hit me up on. On Twitter, uh, it's at Mark Smellybell, same handle for Instagram. Um, I'm on Facebook, anybody wants to uh, email me a question, uh, I don't always get to all of them, but in some roundabout way, I usually get to most of them. Uh, it's uh, powerprojectarmy at yahoo.com. You can hit me up there. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube, uh, YouTube backslash, youtube.com backslash supertraining06. And that's pretty much it. Strength is never weakness. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Hey, guys. Muscle Science and Application T-shirts are now free when you order from PR Products. Our flagship product, the Recover Roller, is a high-density sports massage roller used by NFL football players, elite powerlifters, and bodybuilders around the world. You can custom embroider your roller with your logo, name, and choose any color for it that you want. Get all the info about this free t-shirt offer at AppliedMuscleScience.com slash shirt. Thanks for listening to Muscle, Science, and Application. We'll be back tomorrow. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. Find us at AppliedMuscleScience.com.